This is my first night shift as an F1 and I'm not gonna lie, I am pretty terrified. I'm sure that I'll be okay and that there is senior support um, and it's probably not gonna be things that I've never done before but it is slightly um, scary to think that you are the port of call for a lot of the jobs overnight. This should be interesting. Hey guys, so I thought I'd come on here and explain how a night shift usually works. So we typically have a night shift from 9pm to 9am. You meet with the day team and the night team, they do a handover, so they give you all the jobs that they haven't been able to do, or the jobs that have just come up, and they give you this bleep. So this red bleep is the night F1 on call bleep, and the nurses will bleep this whenever they need anything to be done on the ward, or if they're worried about a patient and they want them to be reviewed. So this will keep ringing throughout the night, and it's my job to prioritise these. So the most important ones are making sure that I review patients who are very poorly, and then other things that are less urgent. It feels like an impossible task sometimes to make sure you get all your jobs done and you review all the patients. Um, so it's really helpful to know the kind of things that you can ask the nurses to do to help you out. So, for example, if a patient is uh, poorly or they're concerned that the patient's confused, you can always ask them to do observations. Um, so looking at their blood pressure, heart rate, temperature, etc. Um, and to get the notes out ready for you. If a patient has a low blood pressure, they can give a stat dose of fluids and do the observations so by the time you get there you can see if that's made a difference. So those kind of things you pick up as you go along with the job. I'm starting to get really tired physically. I think um, I need to have something to eat. Um, the one downside about having to look, at patient, look after patients all over the hospital is that there are, it's quite a big hospital and um, you get calls from all over so you end up having to run around all night and I've been trying my best to group my jobs together so that if I get a couple of non-urgent calls I can go to one place, do them all and then go somewhere else. Um, and that saves me from having to um, go back and forth a lot more. So now I'm going to go to the other side of the hospital again. Um, it's just simple jobs, prescribing, um, sorting out some medication. But yeah, I'm getting tired, but I'm getting there. I'm more than happy to my shift. I've just been to a news call, so that's when a patient's observation, so things like heart rate, blood pressure, are elevated. So in my hospital, it's if they score above seven, uh, they will get a news call. So this starts ringing. It's not the same as a bleep. Um, there's a voice that tells you where to go, and uh, it's more urgent than the other bleeps that you get because the patient is oftentimes very poorly. So I show up to the news call, and so does the medical SHO and the medical registrar. Unfortunately, the patient that we went to see passed shortly after. He was a gentleman that had come in for hyperglycemia, and he had lots of comorbidities um, like dementia, AF, uh, chronic kidney disease and he was being treated for a UTI as well. When we came to see him he was very short of breath, had lots of crackles in his lungs um, and we gave him some furosemide, gave him some oxygen, some nebulizers, um, some morphine to help with his breathing as well and we were in the process of investigating further and trying to find the cause of what was likely an acute pulmonary edema when, um, when he died so my colleague confirmed the death and unfortunately there was nothing more that we could do. Um, it's, it was really strange because it happened very, very quickly. And so far, I've mostly seen patients that were chronically ill, had lots of comorbidities, and I had the time to realize that they were probably going to die very soon. And it happened over a couple of days or weeks, whereas this was very sudden. And of course, when you're called to a news call, you don't have very much time to try and find out about the patient and um, figure out their background and their past medical history. So it is all very much a rush and I'm learning how to be a useful and efficient part of the team, whether it be taking the notes or hunting for information, prescribing medication, whatever it may be, just so that we make sure that we treat the patient well and in the quickest time possible. Hi, 
um, so it's just his respirate and what's he saturated at? So they've noted his deterioration and they want to get palliative team involved. But over the last few hours, he's not deteriorated in terms of his observations in clinical state. Okay, all right, what's his name and hospital number? Hi guys, it's about uh, 3.20 in the morning and I haven't gotten a bleep in the last five minutes, which is great because it's been non-stop until now. So I'm just taking a quick break to pray my evening prayer um, and then I'm going to go to the other side of the hospital where I've collated a list of jobs that I need to get done. I don't know why I'm whispering. I'm really tired. Um, I'm trying to pace myself because I know that I've got a couple of hours left and that I'm going to start getting bleeped again a lot more in the early hours of the morning. But, um, yeah. It's, it's really difficult to prioritise the jobs. Okay, so I've just managed to have a quick midnight lunch, munch. Um, the first part of the night was really, really very busy. I was getting bleeped all the time, non-stop. Um, I was answering a bleep and another bleep was calling me. So it was very intense, but um, it got a bit better. And I, like I said, I managed to have some food. I still haven't been bleeped, which is very strange. Um, but I'm gonna try and make the most of it by just trying to uh, relax a little bit. I'm probably not gonna be able to sleep at all and I know things are gonna pick up in um, the morning. It's four o'clock now and I think that things are probably going to pick up in an hour or two. So I'm trying to just rest a little bit, sit down um, and take a breather because it's very tiring to have to run around the hospital Try to prioritise your list of bleeps. Um, try and make sure that you do thorough reviews, that you do your medication calculations correctly when you're tired. So there's lots of things um, that demand a lot of energy. And so it's important that I try to pace myself. I have just survived my first night shift. It was a very interesting experience. It was much busier than I expected and I didn't realise how much walking I'd be doing so my legs are absolutely killing me. I feel like I've basically done my 5k for the day. I'm incredibly tired. I will try and sleep as soon as I can. The seniors that I had were really helpful. I'm just grateful and happy that I managed to finish the night without killing myself or anybody else. And I've learned a lot, I think. Now I need to sleep so that I can consolidate that and be ready for my next shift. Actually, I decided that I'm just going to tell you about some cases now because I'm not going to have the energy to do it afterwards. So overnight, there were about four news calls. In terms of learning, it's great because the medical registrar, the SHO and myself, uh, as well as some other team members, all show up to the news call. So unless you're the first one there and you need to start immediate management, oftentimes you'll play a supportive role like ordering investigations, taking bloods or scribing, so writing down what's happening and what's being assessed. One of those patients unfortunately passed away, that was something I mentioned earlier, and after that there was another very poorly patient who'd been deteriorating overnight. She was an elderly lady, I can't quite remember what she came in with, but her blood pressure had been dropping over the last few days, she'd been getting more and more confused, and she was slowly but surely deteriorating. So my SHO went to see her first actually, and decided that she was for palliative treatment, and made a decision that she was more for end of life care. That that's when another news call went out, so she asked me to prescribe the palliative medications. So I went back 10 minutes later to go see the same patient and unfortunately she had passed away. So I had to confirm my first death, which was um, quite a strange experience, both very emotional but also very devoid of anything. It felt really, really strange. 
For those of you who don't know, whenever a patient dies, it has to be confirmed by somebody. It's usually a doctor, there are some other healthcare professionals that are trained to do it, and essentially you check a couple of things, so things like whether there are any breath sounds for five minutes, whether they have a pulse, you check if their pupils are reactive to light, etc. Um, so I had to do that for this lady, and the family had just arrived because my colleague who had started her on end-of-life treatment had called the family letting them know that she was deteriorating very rapidly and in the span of 15 minutes they had arrived and she had passed away so I had to speak to the family who thankfully were not completely shocked because they were expecting that this was going to happen so I took them around to see her and then I got called away again um, but that was that was another first um, tonight which was pretty difficult. Other than that, uh, the things I got called for were things like gentamicin prescribing, uh, prescribing some painkillers or fluids, patients who were using high but not high enough to put out a news call, so they were using a six for example, and it could be things like a, a patient that had spiked a temperature, had a low blood pressure, was tachycardic, um, I had a lady who was septic, which means that there's a source of infection that is triggering um, a strong response from the body and that can be life-threatening so that's why it's very important to catch it early and make sure that you start management um, early as well. So I'm covered with antibiotics and ordered some investigations. There was another lady who had a nasal gastric tube um, so that's basically a feeding tube in her stomach and um, she had desaturated overnight. Now the risk of a nasogastric tube is that if it's not placed correctly, then you risk feeding into the lungs and that is called aspiration pneumonia and it can be deadly. For this lady, I started on antibiotics, requested a chest x-ray and some bloods and thankfully it was about an hour or two before uh, the day team arrived so they would closely review her afterwards. You do get bleeped about a lot of things that are not meant to be for the night team. So for example calling the family to give them an update. I also had to review a couple of falls. So those are patients that have either fallen and hit their head or just had an unwitnessed fall. So I have to go see them and try and identify an obvious cause. Anyway, I'm really tired so I'm going to go sleep. But I hope you enjoyed this vlog. It was an effort to try and film it whilst I was also experiencing my first night shift. I am planning on making a video at the end of my night shift to talk about the tips that I learned, the advice that I got from other people and just generally how to survive night shifts as an F1. If you have any questions let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!